Mark Horner looked into this today and he joins us live now from the newsroom. Mark, what did you find out today? Well, Mary, according to the Department of Natural Resources, fireworks caused 53 fires last year, scorching some 60 acres in Wisconsin. No wonder there is a lot of concern about fireworks and the threat they pose to our forests. Police say one person told Ruby not to light the explosive, but he did it anyway, and then threw it across this wall and into a crowd of people. Our reporter Mark Horner has just returned from the courtroom with this breaking news. Mark. Uh, Chuck, that motions hearing just wrapped up within the hour, and what comes out of all of this is a pretty big victory for the prosecution. The woman claims that Woodsack psychologically manipulated her using his position as a therapist to take advantage of her. Green Bay Fire officials say that a blaze that damaged two homes on the city's east side started in a bag of charcoal. Some of the harshest wind chill you'll ever find is right here on the edge of Green Bay, yet we were still able to find people out here today. Okay, thanks, Charlie. That's going to do it for us for right now. Hope to see you again tonight at 10 o'clock. So long, everyone. Mark Horner brings us an exclusive report on the 911 call that first alerted police. You'll also hear how events unfolded from the moment officers first arrived on the scene. Watch. Police first learned that something was terribly wrong when they received this call to 911. Somebody gave me 911. Uh, there's something, something going on over here next door. 329, I think it is, uh, South Weimar. The kids are out here. Uh, the mailman just got one little girl in his arms, and I don't know what the hell's going on, but he said call 911. When the first police officer arrived, no one knew the attacker had already turned the knife on himself. I was able to briefly talk to uh, a son, a young son. He indicated his mother is badly injured inside the house. The male was still in there, armed with an axe, and there is a, a um, rifle or shotgun inside. Our number one concern was to attempt to rescue people that may be in the residence. Heline, Nichols, and two other officers put their lives on the line and entered the house. 150, everybody stay off the radio at this point in time. Uh, four officers are making entry into the residence. And when they did, they learned just how violent things were inside. We need uh, at least one more ambulance to get another adult female down. I need someone to meet me at AMC to transport a severed hand to St. Elizabeth Hospital. After an incident like this, the, the ch you, you know, your children went home last night and, and certainly get a bigger hug than, than usual because it's, it's difficult really to comprehend uh, what the thought process uh, that a person may have to commit such uh, such gruesome acts. Mark Horner, Action 2 News, Appleton. Our reporter Mark Horner was in the courtroom during today's sentencing, and Mark joins us live now from the newsroom. Mark. Mary Neagle may have been hoping for a light sentence, but his previous record, and ultimately that home video that you just mentioned that showed him on his destructive rampage, led to a stiff sentence and some strong words from the judge. 21-year-old Paul Neagle hoped that turning himself in might lead to a lighter sentence. It didn't turn out that way. Yes, there was. And one major reason is this videotape shot by a college student during the riot. And what does it feel like to break everything? Feels great! Police obtained the tape after it first aired on Action 2 News. Yeah, it's just uh, the videotape that was uh, dubbed by uh, our department and transferred to the DA's office. The prosecution played the tape in court today. The judge saw Neagle's destruction firsthand. I wish that I could have control of myself, and I realize now that I need help with my drinking problem. But the judge also considered Neagle's prior felony conviction. Neagle once led Oshkosh police on a high-speed chase while he was driving a motorcycle. You're a danger to other people and their property. Now, Neagle did acknowledge, Mary, that he does have a drinking problem and that he sometimes does act out violently when he drinks. His sentence includes treatment for that problem. He was also ordered to pay more than $3,000 in restitution to the businesses that he damaged and one insurance company. With more on this exclusive report, Mark, what can you tell us? Mary, several uh, parents and team representatives, for that matter, met with tournament organizer John DeBeck earlier today. They flat out accused him of ripping them off, and what followed was not a pleasant scene. But there is a lot of mentality. The meeting didn't last long. DeBeck did not want his face showing on TV, and when he tried to close the door, a parent wouldn't let him. Sir, hey, guys, hey, you want to watch Do you? Do you? You got something coming. DeBeck walked away from the crowd, but parents and coaches weren't about to go unheard. Walk and keep walking! 
Florida, don't come back next year because you're screwing these poor kids. He made us book through his hotels. We had no choice, otherwise we could not play in the tournament. We're paying $60 a night per room for each hotel room. There's been quoted price of $31 per night in the same motel. I mean, they're ripping off little kids. Even the referees are upset. Jeremy Arkema expected to make 15 bucks a game. He was a referee. Well, you talk about misled. Last year's 15, and then they lowered to 12 this year without telling us. Now, DeBeck did tell me earlier today, off camera, Mary, that uh, the rates were higher at these local hotels when the teams booked them earlier this summer. However, I went to one local hotel involved here, and they tell me that their rates were never, ever that high. As for these parents we spoke with earlier today, they say they plan to take these complaints to the Wisconsin State Attorney General's office. Back to you. Okay, Mark Horner with a live report. Mark, just how bad is this? Well, Tom, a lot of people in Appleton are indeed talking about this problem, and the dam itself, well, it's getting some immediate attention. It's called the Upper Appleton Dam and was built back in the 1800s. In some places, it's just plain wearing out. There are leaks at each end of the dam, and at one end, it's bulging out several inches. A wire strung across the growing bulge helps measure its growth. The Army Corps of Engineers is keeping a constant eye on that bulge and will determine what needs to be done. The state says if the problem gets too bad, the dam's gates would have to be opened to alleviate the pressure and that could be dangerous. You know, it all depends on how many gates they open. If they had to open every gate there, yes, there's going to be, there would be impact from the high water. That would be just like a major flood. Bill Lloyd lives just downriver and remembers past floodwaters climbing close to his bedroom window. He's concerned about the dam breaking. Oh, I'm sure the dam would be worse given the nine and a half feet released all of a sudden would be, uh, would come up pretty high, I would think. Now, Appleton Mayor Richard DeBru says this whole thing is just being blown out of proportion. He says plans are already in the works to fix everything. He says some new construction to help fix one of the problems should start in the summer of 1996. We'll hear from the mayor tonight at 6 o'clock. Tom? As Mark Horner saw firsthand today, many boaters are breaking the law right under the nose of police. We ventured up the Fox River with two deputies from the Brown County Sheriff's Department. Brown we only Sheriff's traveled Department. a few hundred yards when we found our first violator. So you're operating in a Slona Wig zone here. While the deputy writes a citation, he waves in another boat for the same offense. It's very dangerous for a, a boat to come through here and create a wake, which could wash up by the municipal boat landing, slam boats off a, off a uh, off the trailer, pinch people in between the dock and the, tra and the trailer, or in between the boat and the dock. We still haven't moved from this spot when something gets the deputy's attention. A large ship warns a small boat of its approach. The boat is pulling two children in inner tubes. That's ridiculous. That's like, let's throw our kids out of the water and chop them up. Not only is the sheriff's department kept busy writing citations up and down the Fox River, there's also a whole lot of activity to look for out there in Green Bay itself. This jet skier committed four violations in about two minutes. He went too fast while closely passing other boats, and he completely cut off one boat altogether. Are they doing something wrong? Yes, sir. Yep. Oh, oh, smash into our boat isn't good. Sorry. Deputy Yaki, from the, take that thing and shut it off. I don't know. Pull, pull that kill switch. There you go. First time I ever owed one. I can tell. Jet skis are subject to the same laws as boats, and Yonke says this type of driver is not uncommon. A person out for the very first time, not too familiar with his craft or the law. Mark Horner, Action 2 News, Green Bay. It is called the Chugach State Park, and no one's ever died there from a bear attack until today. The bear was eating a freshly killed moose when it was startled by a 45-year-old Anchorage man and his 77-year-old mother-in-law. He was trying to protect it. Now that bear was nowhere to be seen when rescuers went in. They say it was probably a brown bear. An unpopular new Wisconsin state law is no longer on the books. The law dealt with blaze orange hunting signs. You may recall this story. Now some lawmakers were concerned that people who shoot at hunting signs might confuse the signs with hunters wearing blaze orange. The new law changed the color of no hunting Every signs to yellow, and that had people seeing red. The dumbest law they've ever heard. Petitions distributed to hunters called attention to their anger over the law. Lawmakers repealed it. It is once again legal to have blaze orange, no hunting signs. Well, for many people, camping and the 4th of July weekend go hand in hand. According to some travel experts, 40% of people like to spend their free time camping. That's one reason why thousands of campers filled campgrounds to capacity this holiday weekend. 
And camping is a bargain compared to hotels. It only costs about $9 a night to camp at Wisconsin's campgrounds. Don't forget to make reservations, though. Many in northeast Wisconsin were booked months in advance. Well, throughout the weekend, residents in Fond du Lac were living in the past, the year 1901 to be exact. Now, while this recreation of a street fair and carnival was fun, it also had a purpose, aiding in the fight to make Fond du Lac the state capital and to keep this once vibrant city from dying out. I think it's very important to keep downtown vital. The person who allegedly threatened to blow up a Los Angeles plane is sending, or sending a lot of letters these days. FBI experts say it's encouraging that the Unabomber is communicating through letters instead of bombs. The FBI confirms that documents a California professor received Friday are in fact from the Unabomber. The bomber also sent his anti-technology manifesto to two newspapers, you may recall, promising to end his bombings if one of the papers publishes it. At this time, the Transportation Department is still taking extra safety precautions. My highest responsibility is to ensure measures. Now, the Unabomber claims responsibility for 16 package bombings since 1978. Japanese police are investigating another gas attack on a subway system. In this latest attack, 31 people complaining of throat and eye pain were treated at the hospital. So far, investigators did not find a trace as to what caused the noxious fumes. The first and most serious attack on a Japanese subway happened March 20th. Twelve people died and more than 5,000 others were sick from that attack. Members of a Japanese doomsday cult are being charged in the attack. A timetable is set for signing a new agreement between the Palestinians and the Israeli leaders. That story tops our worldview tonight. The two sides are currently ironing out the details in an agreement that will expand Palestinian rule in the West Bank. Yasser Arafat and the Israeli foreign minister are planning to meet this week to do just that. A Palestinian senior official says they are planning to sign an agreement at the White House later this month. Israeli firefighters are investigating both arson and negligence as causes for a forest fire that raged outside Jerusalem. The fire is considered the worst in the country's history. It burned out of control for more than six hours, scorching some 25,000 acres and forcing thousands to evacuate their homes. At least 22 people were hospitalized for smoke inhalation, too, in serious condition. And mortar fire at the United Nations headquarters ended a week of violence in Sarajevo. Three peacekeepers and an embassy guard were injured after shrapnel showered the compound. Serb rebels are believed to be responsible for this latest attack. Thirteen people are dead following this week's assault on the Bosnian city. O.J. Simpson's attorneys are preparing for their turn to present their case in Simpson's trial. Simpson's lead attorney, Johnny Cochran, today dismissed the idea the defense will rest without presenting a case. At this time, Cochran says he is uncertain whether or not he will allow O.J. Simpson himself to take I think the stand. O.J. Simpson is an innocent man. And Cochran also says the defense will give the jury some compelling evidence, even though their presentation may be quite brief. Well, Americans are getting ready for the nation's birthday party. We'll show you how some people are making sure that party is going to be a blast. And George Graffis will be here to tell us if the weather on Independence Day will sizzle or fizzle or maybe even drizzle. Okay, George Graffis joining us now. And I know a lot of people wondering what it's going to be like this 4th of July holiday. I have the answer. Very good. I have it. I'm ready to share it with you. But before we do that, let's take a look. It looks sort of like it's going to be a, a little uncomfortable for some if you're heading out onto the Laker Bay tomorrow. Okay, thank you very much, sir. Well, Jack Nicklaus continues to amaze us. He hit a hole-in-one today at the U.S. Senior Open. Charlie's in next to show us that shot. Plus, we'll have the winning shot from this weekend's Beat the Pro contest, and it almost rivals the Golden Bear. Sports is next. Now, I once heard, and I don't know if this is true or not, but someone once told me that auto racing is the biggest spectator uh, sport in the United States. Well, it could be very true, and I'll tell you what, it, it was king in Wisconsin. Uh, excited about that, yeah. All right, now it's fun watching Jack Nicklaus, I tell you. I love it. I can't, I can't get enough of seeing that guy hitting hole-in-ones. Okay, thanks, Charlie. Okay, time now for a final check, and he tells me he's here if I need him. George Graham. Yes, so right here. word on the weather. And I have it. I actually have a couple of words, and here they are. I'm going to share them with you right, right now. We'll have fair skies tonight. By the way, if you're well north, 78, cooler lakeside. Okay, very good. Thank you, George. And Charlie, now with a final word on sports. I will tell you more about the starting lineups for National League and American League later tonight at 10. But quick question, who are the leading vote-getters in the National League? Ken Griffey at his position in the American League, rather, and, and Matt Williams at third base. Two guys that aren't going to be playing because they've been injured for over a month now. But so. they're ever so popular. They're popular guys. <laughs> okay, thanks, Charlie. That's going to do it for us right now. Hope to see you again tonight at 10 o'clock. So long, everyone.